In the run-up to the climate change talks in Copenhagen, there's a lot of talk about pollution of the air and carbon trading. But in fact, what people forget is that the oceans produce 70% of the oxygen that we breathe, and they absorb a huge amount of carbon dioxide. And one of the main impacts of climate change on the oceans is that they are becoming warmer and more acidic. And the reason why I'm standing here today in Sicily, near Mount Etna, is that it's in this volcanic area that scientists are studying to look to the future to see what impact climate change will really have on our oceans. Volcanoes are active on land and underwater. With their gases and lava, they heat up the temperatures of the sea and make it much more acidic, which is exactly what's happening through climate change. In Sicily, scientists and divers are studying the effects of volcanic action on fish and plankton to understand the impact of climate change and our oceans. Well, the Orion Islands, are all, all of them are volcanic islands and what's, what's very particular and interesting is that they, uh, they are very active uh, hydrothermal system beneath all the islands. So the effect on the oceans uh, might be remarkable. If we check what, what happens, uh, for example, around the, uh, the vents uh, of Panarea, uh, we can find a lot of modifications due to the very acidic fluids. So we can find uh, acidic depositions, uh, deposits made by a lot of uh, very toxic elements, including, for example, arsenic. And we also have uh, gases made of carbon dioxide, mainly carbon dioxide, 98%, and uh, H2S. What people don't realize is just how much our oceans are affected by climate change. So we're seeing lots more impacts in the oceans of climate change uh, than people realize. One of the things that's happening is that carbon dioxide is being absorbed into the ocean water. That means it's a bit like fizzy water, so it's becoming more and more acid, and now it's 30% more acid than it used to be before the Industrial Revolution. This has lots of consequences for lots of species. So a number of animals can't really cope with these changes. Uh, we're also seeing uh, changes in temperature in the water. This is leading to uh, some types of systems like coral reefs dying en masse. So in some parts of the world, we've lost already more than half of our reefs due to climate change-induced changes. This is a very grave situation. Warmer temperatures are causing some species to die and others to thrive. Okay, so what we're going to do now is because of the climate change, there's all these tropical fish that are turning up in the Mediterranean. And, and what we're doing here is this is the institute that has the list of all the tropical fish and all the tropical species in the whole of Italy. And they call them alien species. So we're going to find out what are the alien species in these seas thanks to the heating up of the oceans. Okay, so we're going to now see the Dottoressa Teresa Romeo, who's from the Ispra, and she's going to tell us all about the alien species. Vero? Okay. Any time that a fisherman finds a strange or alien looking creature in his net, he can send it to the institute here in Sicily, where researchers identify the fish, analyze its tissues, record it and preserve it for future research. Because of climate change and warmer temperatures, the researchers are now seeing tropical fish in the Mediterranean. In recent years they have identified up to a thousand alien species living in the seas around Italy. They estimate that around 20% of the fish and half of the jellyfish are invasive or alien species from the tropics. To find out what impact these alien species are having on the local fish, I spoke with Finn Larsen from the Global Marine Programme of the IUCN. Well, uh, I think many species introductions tend to be seen as increasing the diversity. We have one more. That the problem is that when you introduce a species to an environment where it doesn't belong, there's a significant risk that it won't be controlled by the predators that would keep it in check where it comes from. The worrying part um, is that once a species becomes established, and becomes invasive when it takes over an ecosystem. There is nothing we can do to change that. 
uh, our only chance really is preventing its successful introduction. Back on the research boat, the team from the Changing Oceans expedition are worried that time is running out. We've been sailing all around the Med for, uh, for the last year. We've met a lot of, uh, of scientists and actually what is really obvious is that the sea uh, temperature has like re raised a lot over the last uh, 10 years. We can see firsthand uh, actually the changes that are appearing in our oceans. And now it's really important that politicians, uh, companies and uh, actually every individual takes action, action uh, before it's too late. Going to Copenhagen, I think a lot of people think mainly about the terrestrial ecosystems, but in fact the oceans play an equally large role. We've really forgotten the oceans in the regulation of the climate. In fact, the oceans uh, are covering 71% of the planet. They provide uh, the vast majority of places where things live on this planet, and they have a very central role in regulating how the climate functions. So we have a great opportunity now to manage for resilience of these marine ecosystems, restore some of them so that they can capture carbon and help us come out of the difficult situation in right now to provide a sustainable future for our coming generations. The question on everyone's lips is what action and change will come out of the climate change negotiations in Copenhagen? And what effect will it have on our oceans and planet before it really is too late?